Hey guys, welcome to AI with AI. This side, Asif Himnad. In today's video, we are going to see a decision tree example, a very popular, a very famous example in decision trees that is Iris dataset classification. This is one of the most important and widely used classification technique under supervised learning. We are going to see a demo using Jupyter Notebook and the Iris dataset. This example is going to be really interesting and fun. So watch this video till the end. Stay tuned. So let's get started. We all know the decision trees is supervised learning method where the right answers are given where we have a label data we need to find more right ones right so it is a classification and also sometimes a regression task and it is one of the most widely used classification technique in machine learning and we have already discussed what is decision tree classifier how decision engine classifies the data and give us the more and more better predictions how it splits the attributes using information gain and using different aspects that is entropy miscellaneous rate and the guinea index we have already discussed that in the recent video in the last video if you have not watched that video please go and watch that video first understand what is decision tree first then we can jump to this video where we are going to talk about the example on iris data set okay so we have already taken this data set in the different machine learning algorithms in classification techniques that is naive based logistic regression so on and so forth and we are continuing with the same example in decision trees the iris data set is a typical machine learning classification problem and there are three species of these flowers are given the setosa versicolor and virginica so when we get a new flower we need to identify which class it belongs to which type it belongs to right so the picture here shows the classes of the iris data set right so this is setosa this is versicular and this is virginica and what features of these flowers are given to us we have sepal length sepal width petal length petal width definitely we are not into a deep learning yet so we don't have a image recognition here we have a data in the form of features we have a data in the form of tables so where we are going to get the sepal length this part is called petal the top part of the flower is petal and the bottom part of the flower is called sepal right and based on the features given the size of these petal and sepal is given based on that we can identify what class the flower belongs to whether it is setosa versicolor or virginica as usual we're going to import all the libraries we will be using throughout this example numpy for numerical operations pandas to get the data in the form of table and perform actions as a data frame matplotlib to plot the data and see how our data really looks like seaborn is another library which will help us to plot the more sophisticated graphs more sophisticated plots and sklearn as we know it is most important library and basic library in machine learning okay so we have a iris data set already available in the sklearn we will be using a data set from the sklearn library itself along with that we have decision tree classifier that we will be using throughout this example along with that we will be also using the matrix to calculate the accuracy of our model to know the precision recall and f1 score which will also help us to get the better accuracy the accurate accuracy i would say and also the confusion matrix okay let's execute this cell let's import all the libraries shift enter import warnings i just want to ignore the warnings then this cell is important where we are going to load the iris data set right so data sets dot iris data set the data sets are coming from the sklearn library itself and we are converting the iris data set just to look at the data to plot the data we are converting our data set in the form of data frames by using pd pd as you know it is a pandas we already discussed these libraries in detail in the previous videos right so pd dot data frame which will help us to fetch the specific columns from the data set that we have received so in the data frame we are defining a data and the columns right and let's print the data using df dot head let me hit shift enter again df dot head will print only first five rows right so as you can see it is sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and the target so all these are x columns and this is your y column so given this data you need to predict the target so you see all the values are in the numericals so when i say zero that means it is one of the class that is could be a setosa 
when I say one, it could be versicolor, and when I say two, it is virginica, right? So in short, machine learning cannot work with the categorical data, right? So we have converted our data in the form of zeros and ones. So target is nothing but a Y column. That is the output that we will be predicting. All right, so let me see how many columns we have. So we are doing DF data frame of target. We are just looking at the target and what are the counts? Shift enter again. So I see type zero, 50, type 250 type 150 all are of type integer right and these are nothing but 0 1 2 is nothing but set of versicolor and virginica so we have equally divided classes here in the table okay now sns dot face grade this will plot the data this is a scatter plot we call right using facet grade we are using map function which will help us to plot the data using matplotlib so i'm using matplotlib dot scatter and i am plotting petal length and petal width so that i can just visualize how does my data looks like so if you remember what are the steps that we follow in machine learning generally right so we import the data we get the data in the form of tables we convert the categorical data in the form of numericals and also we do the feature engineering we look at the count we do some math we remove null values we do scaling so this is all comes under the pre-processing before you actually provide your data to a machine learning classifier and whenever you get a data after you clean the data always plot the data so visualization will give you what is the best model that you can use on this type of data so after plotting this i'm just plotting two by two i mean we have four columns right we have four columns but i can visualize only 2d right so that's why we have considered only two columns here you can choose any columns that you want so we have considered petal length and petal width and just look at the data how it looks like this looks really amazing and i can easily conclude the type 0 that is blue is very separated is easily classifiable Maybe I can just put a line here, which can say that below this line is type zero and above this line could be one or two. At least for type zero, that is Setosa, I should get 100% accuracy. That is what I can predict just by looking at the data. And hence it is important to plot the data, okay? And for type one and type two, what I see, there is some mix between Versicolor and Virginica. There is some mix between Versicolor and Virginica. So I may not get the 100% accuracy for type one and type two, that is Versicolor and Virginica. So this is the big picture that I get by plotting the data. Okay, let's see how it goes. Now let's use decision tree classifier and provide this data, train this data and find out the accuracy. So next step that I'm going to do is use decision tree classifier. Okay, and uh, model is equal to decision tree classifier model dot fit nothing different it's very simple even for any other machine learning algorithms if you remember naive base classifier logistic regression so we used a one single method that is model dot fit so fit function here is nothing but it is training our model it is looking at the data finding the correlation and trying to understand the data and I'm providing X and Y so iris dot data is my X and iris dot target is my Y here right so we have trained our data let me hit shift enter okay and model dot score is again an inbuilt function which will give us the score of our model iris dot data and iris dot target so this is on the same data it is not something different okay and when I get one that means there is a hundred percent accuracy whoa this is something amazing a decision tree classifier is giving me hundred percent accuracy for iris data set classification then why should we not use decision tree every time then this is the only classifier i should always think of using why there are other classifiers we have svm support vector machine we have logistic regression we have naive base classifier we have random forest classifier then why all these different machine learning algorithms we have when decision tree can give us hundred percent accuracy so as a machine learning engineer or a data scientist this is what you need to understand which machine learning algorithm we should use on what data which machine learning algorithm fits best for what type of context for what type of domain so by looking at the data you should understand that this is the machine learning algorithm that I should think of using which will give me a better accuracy so our end goal is always to get the maximum accuracy so there is a one small twist here that I'll talk about a bit later but in the practical life we never get 100% accuracy but we are getting one that means it is 100% accurate okay so let me do the predictions now the accuracy that I'm getting on the training data the same data that I have used to train my model 
Now let me see the better accuracy by using matrix algorithm that is confusion matrix, precision recall and F1 score. You know, for that I have two more variables I have created expected that is iris.target that is Y column. This is what we expect 100% right. This is what we expect that is Y column and predicted is nothing but what is the final output that we have got. What is actually predicted right model.predict and X column. Okay, so what is predicted and what is expected? We got two variables and we're gonna pass these two variables. Let me hit shift enter first to execute this cell. And in this cell, what we are doing is matrix.classification expected and predicted, matrix.confusion matrix expected, predicted. We're just trying to understand the better accuracy, the better way to measure the accuracy of our model, right? We have seen precision recall F1 score. If you don't understand precision recall F1, score and why we are using it why we are using confusion matrix we have also created dedicated video on confusion matrix and precision recall and f1 score so i'll put the link in the i button please go and watch that video but just to understand quickly precision recall and f1 score helps me understand the accuracy better so it says for type 0 i am getting 100 percent accuracy that is precision is 100%, recall is 100%, F1 score is also 100%. F1 score is actually average of precision and recall. Okay. And for type 1, it is also 1, 1, 1. For type 2, it is 1, 1, 1. So that means again, I'm getting 100% accuracy in terms of precision, recall and F1 score. I told you there is a twist here. We'll talk about that. And what is the confusion matrix? So if I look at the confusion matrix here, if you remember how many rows we have, we have 50 rows, right? We have 50 of each type, 50 set. 50 versicular 50 virginica okay so this confusion matrix says 50 are rightly classified as setosa 0 versicular 0 virginica so this second row says that the type 1 is rightly classified this is type 0 type 1 type 2 Okay, this is Setosa versicular virginica, right? So again, this tells me that there is no misclassification. The machine learning training is so accurate that we are getting 100% accuracy. So that is why we need to understand the pros and cons of machine learning algorithms. And it is also important to understand what are the parameters that I can think of using in machine learning algorithms, right? In the model that I'm going to use that is decision tree classifier, I should know the parameters. I should know how should I tune, fine tune my algorithm. Okay, so to do that you don't really need to remember okay okay you can just google decision tree library and look at the library so that you can able to understand the parameters better so for this decision tree classifier you can see the parameters that is criterion splitter max depth max samples so on and so forth right so if you remember we discussed about criterion based on which you want to split the features based on which you want to consider because decision tree creates a tree right root node and the leaf nodes so on and so forth we discussed it in the last video so what is that criteria by which you want to split the attribute so default is Gini index we can change it if you want entropy log loss so on and so forth we can switch between Gini index and entropy if you don't want you can keep default you can also think of using splitter it is just to understand which node needed to be considered as a best how do you want to split your attributes whether by using a best match or a random approach not much important for us the important one is criterion and the max step so you always remember one thing decision tree has a tendency to overfit so if you don't cut the tree if you don't define the max step it will keep forming the tree so when you form a tree that means you will always end up getting the right answers okay so i told you about one disadvantage and which is very important that is decision tree has a tendency to overfit all right so that is why we need to define the depth through to which depth you want to create the tree and you don't want to go further because if you do not define the depth then tree will be completed and you will get the pure nodes at the leaf always that is why you will always get 100 percent accuracy so let's go back to our demo and define the parameters here so you can see the one line that I have commented. Let me comment the previous line here, hash, and let me remove this. Model is equal to decision tree. I'm defining criterion is equal to entropy because default is anyway Gini index. We discussed entropy as well in previous video, right? And max depth is three. I want to create the tree only till the level three. After that, you can cut the tree. Don't allow tree to grow. That is what we are saying here, okay? So let again execute this. And now let's see what is the accuracy we are getting. Let me execute all the cells here. Okay, so if I come back and see, I can see that the score this time is 97%. Beautiful. 
beautiful okay after i define the depth i mean i cut the tree the accuracy got reduced and it is important to define the depth right and this is where the machine learning engineers the data scientist job is to understand the best max step and the best criteria this is what you mean by fine tuning your parameters fine tuning your model okay and what is the confusion matrix and precision recall f1 score we are getting it is 111 again for setosa you remember we have already discussed it when we have plotted the data it was pretty easy even for us to classify it okay so there is no mix match between any other classes so definitely we will get one that is 100 percent accuracy for type 0 that is setosa whereas we had some mixes in versicular and virginica that's why i see 98 percent precision 94 percent recall and f1 score is finally we got 96 percent for type 1 that is versicular okay similarly for type 2 it is 96 so in general we always give the accuracy of our model in in terms of f1 score so we say f1 score of my model is 96 percent here all right and looking at the confusion matrix i get more detailed analysis i can say the setosa is classified 100 percent that is 50 setosa zero versicular zero virginica and on type 1 we have zero setosa 47 are rightly classified as versicular three are wrongly classified as virginica so there are three data sets three flowers which are actually versicular but these are classified as virginica okay and third row says that zero classified as setosa one is classified as versicular and 49 are classified as virginica so there is only a one false prediction here okay whereas for versicular there are three bad classification okay so let's change the depth max depth of our model and see what is the accuracy i'm gonna get this time i'm gonna change it to two let me sh hit shift enter again let's see the score so now this time it is 96 percent previously we were getting 97 percent now also let's see the precision recall f1 score and confusion matrix so again there is no change in setosa 100 percent accuracy for this right uh, versicular virginica 94 94 so this time my model accuracy is approximately 94 95 percent right and i can also see the confusion matrix so this time the confusion matrix is a bit different so there are five wrongly classified virginica okay so 45 are virginica and five flowers are wrongly classified as versicular all right so this is what i can predict the conclusion from this discussion is you should always define the criteria and the max step okay let's proceed ahead this is just for fun i have extended this demo and created some visualization don't worry about the code here i'm gonna upload this notebook on the git repository you can find the link in the description below comment below if you need this code i will help you with the notebook okay let's hit shift enter for now and let's see what we have what is interesting here what is fun here it is nothing different we are just uh, using some interactive python libraries and uh, we are trying to interact with our model we are trying to you know provide the parameters and see how does my machine learning algorithm is trying to classify the data here okay so if you look at this so here we are using two interactive widgets that is type and depth so in the type you can see you can choose the parameter right guinea index or entropy so by using guinea index and defining the depth i can change the depth of my model so accordingly you can also visualize you can see the below diagram is changing for sepal width and sepal length amazing isn't it on below you can also see when i define let, let's put it as guinea index and change the depth max depth to 2 and you can see the precision recall and f1 score here right it is 50 49 45 and when i change the max step it should also change now this is different 50 47 49 it is just for fun to play with the decision tree algorithm and provide the dynamic parameters okay but all we did is a decision tree classifier the parameters we are dynamically providing nothing different you can see there is a function defined we are just passing the values at runtime that is all okay i hope you understood most important and most popular algorithm that is decision tree algorithm in machine learning and we have seen an example and demo on this if you have more questions on it if you're still facing issues please comment your questions below in the video i try my best to help you out guys and also don't forget to like subscribe and comment that is it for now see you in the next video thank you